Good Friday morning, and welcome to Ice Age TV, the internal combustion engine age YouTube channel. Talks about the cars, the trucks, SUVs, the dogs, and all our good stuff. From there, thanks for tuning in to the Ice Age YouTube channel for the morning conversations to get the morning going. Wow, what a beautiful Friday morning! And it's going to be a hot one here, actually. So we're getting the uh, the summertime feel today. And yeah, it's hot and not too humid, so that's not too bad. As we go over to the uh, office this morning and look at the grass, spent the evening cut the grass yesterday, and looks uh, not too bad. And it's slowed up. It's kind of a little dry here. And uh, actually, that's to my advantage because the grass slows slows down oh my goodness gracious another week here has passed us just tons of work look at the uh ford tremor truck here i've actually been driving that lately this thing's a lot of fun i really like it i ordered some rough country e-steps for like 1300 dollars delivered and they're supposed to be delivered here tomorrow that could be a youtube video in the making for the weekend possibly but just a great truck really even though this rear suspension is a one-ton spring setup, should have three springs, not six. So, what are we talking about today? What's the uh, the talk, the conversations? What is the theme today, right? As we get into the shop here and get the day going here, yeah. Talk is cheap. I thought to myself this morning, what's a conversation we could talk about here? And I thought to myself. We'll talk about the state of the times and the uh, car situation on how I thought to myself, have you heard the phrase, talk is cheap? And I thought to myself, wow, <laughs> boy, oh boy, <laughs> talk is cheap. If that isn't contradictory to the statement of that saying. So here's the first, we'll be around for the weekend. And do we make it to Mopar weekend? I mean, I've run out of my collection. The GT500 Mustangs are gone. The Gold Rush is gone. The race truck is gone. The Bronco is gone. I mean, so what's the theme for the... Or is it the motorcycles? Yeah, I don't know. All right, dogs. <clears throat> Let's get today going here and uh, talk about... Talk is cheap. I think to myself, good Lord. For me, uh, yeah, just my YouTube channel to say that talk is cheap for all the thousands of hours that I have put into this YouTube channel to say that that it's cheap for all my efforts and time money I've made out of it which is pretty much nothing at all <laughs> I mean no lie so yeah for me talk is cheap because I don't get paid much of anything for my talk I really don't and for the amount of money I've spent to create conversations and talk. Think about all the cars and trucks and motorcycles I've bought and adventures and traveling. And so for me, yeah, talk is cheap. If looking for a cheap guy to be able to talk, I'm the guy because I, YouTube doesn't pay me much of anything. You know, and it isn't me complaining. It's just the facts that of my YouTube channel that draws in the viewers it's not simple, not easy. So, uh, so yeah, I thought to myself, wow, how could that statement be so far off in the times that we live? As we progress, that was a word I've always used over the years. So instead of telling somebody you're getting older, you just say, hey, you're progressing. You're progressing. You're not getting older. But progressing, so what does progressing really mean, right? Moving forward and... Once again, I just can use, the, you know, it's the Ice Age channel, but the EV Age is progressing more than ever. And I just think that, boy, talk about talk is cheap. And that's the thing we hear day in, day out now in the progressive policies is the never-ending EV movement, the Green Agenda movement. And I just think, how is that cheap? <laughs> So as all these individuals push the green agenda to the highest level ever in our lifetime, 
how is that, um, how is their talk cheap? And I know it's got a connotation to that saying, of, you know, what you bring to the table versus what you talk about. But I just think in, today we've got people that present the green agenda and, and other policies that, you know, portray the better of mankind and, and things that will play out a certain way. But it's extremely expensive. I mean, is anybody really paying attention to this Inflation Reduction Act right here in my office? And just making sure my dogs are here. They are all here. The little ones are all here. So the Inflation Reduction Act, I mean, it just it just befuddles me and how many you argue with people to you turn blue in the face about this Inflation Reduction Act of this administration pushing this and our politicians supporting it because that new uh, debt bill that was supposed to uh, reevaluate the fiscal responsibility of our sitting powers of government on how they're managing the money to pay the bills and how when it came down to the end, uh, you know, really what was, was it just more um, talk than action per se? I mean, what really got gutted versus didn't in the electric, the, the Inflation Reduction Act, it really didn't get touched. And that bill is, you know, a billion, billions of dollars of taxpayers' monies that are going to be given to the green agenda incentives. And, and so for people, I mean, I'm no, uh, I'm, I'm part of it just as much as anybody else is. You got these electric cars, you, you go out and buy an electric car, and you can get up to $7,500 tax credit to buy the car. So us tax pay, taxpayers are in the, uh, you know, rewarding, or I should say more or less paying dearly for the actions of others to support the green agenda electric vehicle um, market. Because you as a taxpayer are paying an individual to buy a car and get a discount. And then we're paying through our tax monies, money sell the manufacturers to grow their manufacturing capability to build infrastructure, to build the batteries, and to build the cars. So how is talk as cheap in that situation? Because all you hear is the talk, you know, 24-7 of how the world's going to be a better place off of all this um, green agenda electric vehicle technology and the solar panels and the windmills and the renewable energies. So, yeah. How is that cheap? I mean, it's the most expensive times in our <clears throat> in modern times, in our lifetime, for most people that are following the news and are abreast of what's going on. We're spending money like never seen to change over to a different way of, uh, of sustaining energy in our country and world. And once again, it's at your expense and my expense that the whole pitch is it's going to be a better world, but it's going to be extremely expensive. I mean, is anything getting cheaper? I mean, sincerely, is anything getting cheaper? I'm not really seeing it. Sure, you can argue with the gas prices, but the gas prices, that was just a hoax. That was a farce. That was so ridiculous of what Russia... The Russia-Ukraine war was going to make the world be, go into an oil crisis. I mean, what a freaking joke. That's all it was the market. It's the greedy-ass Wall Street stock market traders that buy into this stuff and drive the market through the roof. It's the greedy-ass money monger stock people that want to sit back and smoke their cigar and enjoy the rise of stocks at your expense. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's, it's beyond believable. And so many people have gotten rich from stocks. And that's the, that's the conversation. You will hear conversation. Conversations of people will tell you that they've worked for these companies where employees got stock options, where they became millionaires overnight. And the infrastructure of a lot of these businesses have deteriorated because key people that helped run these businesses have retired. They've moved on. Because they were rewarded for these stocks that were, in so many ways, Overpriced. I mean, that Tesla stock, oh my gosh. I mean, who here 10 years ago, you know, doesn't wish they would have bought Tesla stock? Amazon. I mean, you go through the list of these stocks that have just gone through the roof. 
And I mean, I'm not even naming all NVIDIA, that new uh, super chip company making super chips for artificial intelligence. There's a whole other conversation. The artificial intelligence, the generative pre-trained transformer, chat GPT, X.AI, open AI. Talk is cheap, right? People want to talk to a computer for it to tell you things that you don't understand. Is that going to be cheap? I mean, what's the long-term recourse of the artificial intelligence? I mean, yesterday I was talking about the spies among us. And, wow. I mean, you know, and look at what I was talking about the other day with the chips. Where the chips are getting very expensive. And there's so many companies wanting this technology that can't get the technology because of the surge of this open AI that's been opened back up to advance like never seen before. And the stock for NVIDIA has, has increased by 167%. And they can't build ships fast enough for everybody wants them. And, and like I said yesterday, it's possible Elon Musk bought out most of the chips from them to get his X.AI uh, you know, platform going. So, but here's the thing, it's talk, you know, just like my YouTube channel, what do I do? I talk. What's the most dominant thing going on more than ever in our society? These are podcasts and people talking. And now we want to talk to computers to tell you everything. And you want to talk to computers to train them to do things for you. So, is, is, is talk, you know, is, is, <laughs> I mean, wow. I mean, are we at the highest level ever ever in mankind of talking and and advancing what are we advancing i mean an all sincereness the craziness are we advancing craziness more than ever in modern times i mean the progressive agendas of the people trans you know transgendering and the i mean you can go through the it's an infinite list right now of all the things that are being talked about and you just, and that's once again, is talk is cheap. No, it's not. I mean, it's it's the most expensive. It's the most expensive ever. Look at Fox News and Tucker Carlson. Think about this. How expensive was it for Tucker Carlson to defame Dominion voting machines? And Fox News, the uh, Murdoch family, had to come to the table from a defamation suit and settle outside the uh, court. Uh, you know, how many millions of dollars for a guy named Tucker Carlson uh, mouthing off, talking on a regular basis of the stolen election and Dominion voting um, being the key ingredient for that stolen election. I mean, it's much, you know, for me, I didn't even really follow great depth, so I'm just saying talk is cheap. Well, didn't Tucker Carlson just cost Fox News, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars? And, and the rumor is part of that settlement was Tucker Carlson had to be dismissed from Fox News. Now, I don't know. I haven't followed it that much. I didn't watch Tucker Carlson on a regular basis. So am I not depth to it? I could be saying some stuff that's maybe misinformation. But I think on the surface, from my perception, uh, that talk wasn't cheap. That talk was extremely expensive. Here you got the CEO, Jim Farley of Ford. Talk is cheap. Here over a year ago, he told his dealers at the dealer meetings that they were going to go to order only inventory. Okay. Where, you know, to me, when I heard that story, I was like, this guy's crazy. That's going to be an expensive transition because that will only work if the other major manufacturers follow the same type of uh, business model. And that's what all the GMs, these four dealerships are saying, except for Jim Farley. He's going to destroy him because when a guy crashes his Ford truck and he goes to Ford dealership and he has to wait three months to get his Ford truck, but General Motors and Ram or Toyota or whoever has a brand new truck sitting on their lot because they're continuing to build dealer inventory, that guy's not going to buy an R Ford. He's going to buy one of those other brands. So it was a, you know, talk is cheap. That would have been a very expensive mistake. And that's what the dealers were very concerned about, is the CEO of Ford was going the wrong direction in his rhetoric and his talk. Now, you know, the big talk is that the CEO, 
Jim Farley has cut a deal with Tesla. So in 2024, your Ford vehicle will have Tesla charging capability. All right. Uh, that's got to be behind the scenes a payout to Tesla. There's no way I can see that Ford and Tesla, the Elon Musk, just opened the door for free. I mean, I don't know. I have not really read into or dug deep into that whole um, agreement and relationship. But you just know that for Elon Musk, when does Elon Musk do anything for free? Anybody, anybody sharing that idea? Is he does Elon Musk just provide things for free? I mean, here's some. Here's this for Elon Musk. Talk about talk is cheap. Here's a guy that bought Twitter for forty billion dollars. For the most part, overvalued. For the most part, a bleeding social platform that he's trying to uh, resurrect and repair. So think about for Elon Musk. He, he talk is cheap. Yeah, Twitter's costing him billions of dollars. And now one of his key moderators, I guess you could say in so many ways, an easy way to evaluate this lady, Irwin or something, Ella, or I'm not even sure, that has departed. And the lady before her that had the oversight of the, you know, I guess the, eth you know, the ethnic and the, I guess, basically a person in charge to make sure that the platform's not doing devious things and, misclassified information. I guess, you know, it's it's the patrol person, I guess. Well, one person before her left when Salon took over. Now this lady's left. And it's because of the new CEO coming in. My guess would be it's more about the new CEO coming in and probably just, you know, button heads on what's acceptable on a social platform. It isn't. But once again, for Elon Musk, talk is cheap. Yeah, $40 billion for Twitter, right? And bleeding at the same time. Here's an article I read this morning that the RV industry. Yeah, who uh, who hasn't bought an RV? It talks in great length about how the RV industry is basically down 40% from the pandemic. But I've said it a gazillion times. You know, the pandemic created in my eyes a very false economy. Because everybody their brother went out and bought things that, in the end, we all knew would probably regret it in the end, and it wouldn't have done it had their lifestyle not catered to their instant gratification of having more leisure and more time to go do things that they didn't have prior to the pandemic. And so the uh, RV industry is off by, you know, at least 40% of sales. So the talk is everybody paid premium price for RVs, they may be underwater by 30% plus value of their RV. So a guy that spent 200 grand on their RV, they're lucky probably right now to get a hundred, I would say 120 grand, maybe 140 maybe, because you can go buy a brand new one because they're discounting these things. Now the 200 grand RV just may be 150 grand. So you buy a used one for 140, I doubt it. You could buy a used one for probably 100 to 120. And the inventory for the RV industry is massive. So, but at the same time, I'm not hearing any bankrupt RV dealers. I'm not hearing any bankrupt manufacturing dealers. And that's the thing. So, it's all about the profits. And it's all that they talk about is now, after the pandemic, it's so expensive to go camping. Everything's 30% more. I mean, it's a no-brainer. Everybody raised their prices to offset the potential of lesser volume. But in some aspects, some of these dealers in RV industry didn't lose volume. Their volume went through the roof, but they were able to even raise their prices and still get the huge profits. So it was the most profitable, lucrative time, I guarantee, of the RV industry during the pandemic. But now, since they've raised the prices so high, they've got to be careful because they could just obliterate their whole RV industry if they lower their prices on their new RVs as the used market's going to be just killed and people are going to be stuck. And then they're going to have a hard time taking used RVs in for new ones. So, you know, it's a ball game. Yeah, talk is cheap, right? So what's the talk among the RV dealers and manufacturers and industry? Uh, they got to be very careful of just starting to have to give away product to move product and just undermine their whole uh, used uh, RV base. You know, same thing in the car market. 
That's a whole thing has been talked about now for the last two plus years. As a used car market, it's going to tank. It's going to fail. It's going to tank. It's going to crash. Now the you, you get these YouTubers, the, the father and son, your allied alliance or whatever here in Bethesda, Maryland. I don't know. I just they're they're you they're to their point of their big, you know, ad on their YouTube channel is it takes forever to get the information out what they're actually talking about. And so they're claiming now the generation Zers or whatever aren't paying their car payments. So the repossessions are through the roof. Tonight, man, I am I am in and out of doors of car dealerships, motorcycle dealerships. I am not hearing any stories of this so-called, you know, dire straits. I mean, oh my gosh, the Indian dealer down there in in uh, ten Tennessee or Virginia, it's Virginia side, Bristol. I deal with there. The, I can honestly tell you, even for me, I would think things have changed. Um, no, when I was down there. They barely had time. I was trying to buy that slingshot or orange one that I drove. And they, the day I was there, they had, if my deal had gone down, five deals. And then the next day, they had four or five deals. Then the next day, I mean, they were overwhelmed on the back end of trying to get deals done and finding it seen done and units sold. That, I mean, I was borderline just kicked to the curb. It isn't a big deal because they had plenty going on and they did get things in order, but I just didn't come to agreement on the deal that they put together. I just didn't like the deal. So, but the thing is, they were busy as all get out. <laughs> I called another dealer here in the area and I'm not lying. I know the owner. I've known him for now, like, I guess eight years. And he told me on the phone, he's overwhelmed. He's overwhelmed. There are people lined up in his showroom want to buy motorcycles, ATVs. I mean, <laughs> if you think I'm making this up, I'm not. So this guy's telling me on the phone, I'm overwhelmed. I really can't even talk to you. You have to call me back tomorrow to talk in more in depth of what you're wanting to do or whatever. But I am overwhelmed. So uh, you need to talk to somebody else. Wow. My local Dodge dealer here, they had, you know, a good a good month. I mean, decent month. One of the guys that works there, his father runs a GMC Buick dealership in Tampa, Florida. And they had their best month possibly ever, ever of selling cars and trucks. <laughs> so so you, you, can, you hear these YouTubers out there talking about the dire straits of all these places going broke. And things are gonna the, the lights are turn off. It ain't happening. So their talk, their talk is cheap. That's where you use the phrase where you tune into a guy that's promoting a YouTube channel, and all you hear is the dire straits that never play out. And Dan the man of uh, what's the name of Dan the man out there in California? I try trying to remember his channel. I haven't tuned into it for a long time. It's funny. His thing doesn't even populate on my YouTube um, subscriber thing. And he's been predicted now for now coming up, I would say, the third summer of this country going to the ground. And everything going to the ground. I mean, houses being repossessed left and right, cars being repossessed left and right, people losing jobs. I mean, here's the thing. I'm, I mean, maybe I'm just oblivious to what's going on. Maybe, in all reality, in California... Um, the foreclosure rate out there is through the roof. Maybe the car repossession is through the roof. Maybe people are losing jobs. I don't know. I'm not hearing it. I'm just, does anybody hear? I mean, anyone watch my channel that's out on the West Coast? Can somebody like make a comment? Hey, man. Hey, Iceman. You are so out of touch reality. It's a dire straight situation here. There are people unemployed. People can't afford their house payments. People's homes are being repossessed. Cars are being repossessed. Car dealerships are closing left and right. Motorcycle dealerships are out of business. Boat dealerships are closing their doors. RV dealerships um, have filed bankruptcy. I mean, can anybody share this stuff? Because this is the other YouTubers that get a following of all the negativity of their talk is cheap. <laughs> and that's what you hear from a lot of people. I talk to people in general. They're like, yeah, you get these YouTubers out there. And it's like their talk is cheap. They're just, they're just talk, talking malarkey. So, I mean, I don't know. I'm not here to call out anybody else's YouTube channel. 
But at the same time, I'm in the streets day in, day out. I'm in Florida. I'm in Tennessee. I'm in Virginia. In Tennessee, they are going gangbusters. I know of a guy that works on homes. He could work seven days a week. The housing market is, is going through the roof. The construction is through the roof. The people in, in Johnson City are not happy because every and their brother is moving from these blue states to that area, and they're ruining the market because everybody and their brother in the blue states have overpaid for everything, and they come there, and it's so dirt cheap, they'll pay even more than what it's even worth that are driving the prices through the roof. Wow. Yeah, talk is expensive. That needs to be the real story. Now, here's the next thing. The the remote workers who are resisting to go back to work are getting called out. So, you know, the talk amongst the big employers is this continued remote working model does not work. They want people back in the office. So, and, and here's lots of people out there that here you go, talk is cheap, that are saying, I'm not going back. I'm not going back because I'll just find a gig somewhere else where I'll continue to be able to sit at home and work remotely. And the, and the argument for some of these people is their remote working saves them so much money, transportation, child care. So you think that's your child care. So now you're a person. If you've ever had a kid and you got a one or two year old or three year old or four year old or five year old, whatever kid running around you while you're trying to do your job. I mean, uh, are you serious? You really think you can do your job? while you're babysitting your kid throughout the day, you can't. Sure. Okay, well, yeah, you'll make it work somehow, but there's no way your focus on your job is is complete 100%. I mean, you're, you're lowering your standards. And that's what I think to myself, too. I need to make a YouTube video about lowering your standards. More than ever in our society, have we lowered our standards? I mean, more than ever of where we are, we have lowered our standards. I mean, it's beyond believable. Or yesterday, I was talking about, you know, the best or the day before. I just, yeah, what am I talking about? Right, talking about a lot. But the thing is, more than ever today, yeah, talk is cheap. And it seems as if we've elected these political officials and even leaders of companies that they've lowered their standards that is costing the the consumers and the citizens of this country, a lot of money. There's a lot of mistakes going on more than ever because we've lowered our standards to elect people that don't have the capability to do their job or manage things properly. And if you're in the real world, if you actually have worked in a business or you've lived in a family and you have somebody who doesn't know how to handle things and makes mistakes, it's expensive. It gets very expensive. Oh, my goodness gracious. Yeah, so talk is cheap, right? So maybe some people will call my channel out and say, yeah, dude, your talk is cheap. What I learned today from your channel. And I'd say, well, you tell me. <laughs> right? <laughs> get called out, right? And now, now all the GOP candidates are starting to get lined up. And it's all now. It's just hard to believe it's going to be 24-7. Of the political election theater is starting now. It's hard to believe. We are now going into, for the next over a year, into the fall of next year, of the political rhetoric of election time. And who's going to be the GOP candidate? And all the, uh, the back and forth. Yeah, talk is cheap. Boy, oh boy. It'll be interesting to see. The, uh, the, the GOP... Debates. I mean, I can't wait to see that. I mean, for me, you, you got to be, you got to, oh, come on. You're going to have some characters up on stage. So to me, now it's interesting the Joe Biden regime power, it looks like they're not going to let anybody, you know, run for president. And it's just going to be the guy that trips a lot <laughs> and falls down or falls around his hands and knees a lot. It's going to be the guy that could do it another. I mean, you're talking about a guy now that people want to reelect that has six plus years that would be in power. And if I tell people all the time, as you get older, one year increments or 10 year increments, when you hit your 80s, no, man, uh uh. 
uh, I mean, I'm just telling you right now, when you hit 80 years old, a one year time frame is probably like three to five years of aging. I think when you hit 85, I think it grows exponentially. So if this guy, Joe Biden, anybody thinks this guy is going to be able to run his, you know, be the president of the United States, when this guy's 86 years old, I mean, why are you lowering your standards? I mean, the Democratic Party, for you Democratic people, I don't think many probably watch my channel. I don't know. I'm not calling you out by any means because for me, let's pick leaders that make sense. Let's just pick leaders that make sense. Forget, forget the party. Let's find a person that just kind of makes sense in the for most aspects of all of us here in our country. So to me, you're lowering your standards. To you know, you're you're picking political figures, and that's what's so sad is you have these senators like Nancy Pelosi. I mean, you can go through the list: Mitch McConnell, you know, Schumer. I mean, you have these these forever. Political people that never go away. You know, they're career politicians. And they're ancient. And they're, out of t they're just out of touch with times and reality. You know, they've leveraged themselves. So, yeah, so is their talk cheap? They're, these politicians, their talk is extremely expensive. They are costing our country more money than ever seen in modern times. But it's costing you more money than ever in your life to live your life. But here's the thing. I'll be the first to raise my hand and say, I'm not seeing it. When I go out, <coughs> I knew I was going to get cough this morning. I knew I'd get it. So sorry about that. But anyways, the uh, when you go out and travel where I am, everyone and your brother's out. The roads have gotten crazy up here in this D.C. area. Even down there in Tennessee, everybody and their brother's out. Restaurants, shopping centers. I mean, gas stations, the list goes on and on and on. I'm not, yeah, so, wow. All right, everybody, I'm going to kind of wrap it up with that. Just thought that would be the Friday conversation. And what am I doing today? Uh, i got tons of projects and got so many things going off in my business right now. Man, I don't know. It's going to, it's starting to impact my travel time. I don't know. I got a lot of things going on right now, which is to my advantage, but at the other side of the equation, breaking away from the business to take care of families is even more challenging because I just have too much going on. And, you know, I'm down a man. I'm down. I'm a man short. So it's more of me than ever of having to do so many things. So anyways, all right, everybody. Hey, thanks for watching my channel and, uh, you know, what lies ahead? What's the next adventure? Some the other day was like, man, how long has it been since you bought something or bought a car? I'm like, yeah, wow, it's probably been 45 days. <laughs> yeah, it can't go that long. I got to go buy something, right? Yeah, I just have to buy something to keep the uh, the continued uh, conversations going, the expensive things I have to do to keep the conversations going. Wow. Everybody, hey, everybody have a great day. And thanks for watching my channel. Share the channel. And anybody has any comments, go ahead and just make a comment. That's a great, I like reading comments. That's good to hear. It's the other people are watching and are in tune. So I hope everybody has a great Friday. And I hope things are going well for you and your family. So God bless. Stay safe. Stay tuned. Have a great day.